All right, keep it away, Troy. Um, Troy, can you unmute yourself? Got it. Sorry right. about that. Right. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, can can I'm, I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome to this uh, presentation uh, from Balance. Uh, I am a smart money uh, coach also considered a financial uh, a counselor, um, and as well as um, my colleague, uh, Howard Fittell, uh, that's also on this call. Um, he is uh, one of our seniors, and I'm, I'm so happy that uh, he has graced me with his presence to be here. Uh, <laughs> so um, today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, saving with purpose. Uh, and, and the idea is to provide you with a little bit of understanding uh, as to why it's so important to save. If you came on to this uh, with anticipation that we will be doing some in-depth uh, investment uh, type knowledge, that, that's not what this is about. This is more about the 101, uh, the, the sort of basics uh, to saving and, and getting started in that realm. So I want to make sure that that's clear so that folks understand sort of where, where we're going with this and uh, what this is about. This is about building towards savings. So basically for us, uh, this would be uh, the beginning and getting you ready to go and see uh, some, some, you know, maybe uh, a financial uh, advisor because that financial advisor will help you with more long-term investments. We're, we're going to do the basics prior to when you get there. Okay. So with that being said, uh, welcome once again. I'm happy uh, that you all are here to join and, and, and listen in on this presentation. I'm going to make it as painless as possible, try to make it as exciting as I possibly can, and we're going to uh, kick it off now. So uh, the first thing uh, I, I would like to talk about is uh, this is about uh, creating uh, uh, goals that will help us to improve uh, our lives. Uh, I mean, that's basically what we do. We're always trying to set goals. This is why we go to the gym uh, and want to lose weight or, uh, or build muscle. Uh, we apply for new jobs because we want to uh, seek uh, a, cha a challenge for ourselves and increase um, our income. That's oftentimes why we do these things. Uh, we play community sports, for instance. I play basketball in the community uh, because I like to explore hobbies. But in addition to that, I also want to connect with the people that are in my neighborhood. Um, and curious, uh, like curiously, uh, we don't tend to uh, look at savings in that same way. Many times uh, we don't identify an end goal. Whereas when I'm lifting weights, I have an end goal. Maybe my goal is to bench press 500 pounds, but that's not what we do when, when it comes oftentimes to our, our savings. We don't have an end goal. So, uh, today's workshop, uh, we'll learn how to save with purpose, uh, and this can help us to uh, strengthen our financial uh, footing um, and, and moves us a step closer to achieving our financial goals. Um, we'll also uh, review some common types of savings uh, goals that can help us um, to, uh, uh, you know, later on to, to set, you know, major goals for ourselves later on in life. Um, by the end of this workshop, I hope <laughs> that uh, you'll have a strong understanding as to why it is important uh, to save with purpose and, uh, and what, uh, what you'll be pur purposely saving for. Troy, Next slide can, for me. Okay, so you, you'll tell me when you want me to advance. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I forget you can't, can't see this. So um, uh, I'm going to ask you to go uh, to the next slide, actually. Okay, so um, one of the, the big pieces to saving uh, is understanding the difference between, um, you know, instant gratification, which is the right now, or, or, and delayed gratification. And a lot of times it, it's really difficult to save because a lot of people don't want uh, to, to deal with the delay in gratification. You want the right now. Uh, if I asked you, you know, hey, do you want to 
uh, eat right now uh, versus, you know, uh, and, and spend some money on, on food right now versus uh, saving to uh, buy something later on. It's like, hey, I'm hungry right now. I want to eat right now. So um, it, it, delayed gratification is something that's harder for us to achieve. Um, one of the uh, best ways to understand this concept is through uh, something that was done called the, marsh the marshmallow experiment. And in this ex experiment, uh, this was done by a, sta uh, a Stanford professor and, uh, and his associates. Uh, they basically brought in a bunch of five-year-olds into uh, a room and sat them in uh, chairs and placed a marshmallow in front of them. And uh, the researchers told the children that, you know, if, if they eat this marshmallow, um, they could either eat it right away or they could wait about 15 minutes and have a second marshmallow. And uh, quite frankly, I mean, most of the, as soon as the researchers left the room, most of these children, of course, ate the marshmallow right away because that was instant gratification. And they couldn't wait for that second one, although it sounded like a really good idea. So uh, the same things tends to happen with our, ourselves and our, our savings and our spending we tend to like instant gratification right away. Um, when uh, it comes to the, the choice of whether to spend or whether to save, we, we, we like I said, once again, it's, it's, it's about instant gratification. If you can uh, shift that perspective though, and start to resist temptation, um, you know, rather than talking, thinking about today and, and start to recognize the benefits of, of delayed rewards, uh, this will, will absolutely can change your life uh, uh, and, and the way that you look at things. It can reduce your stress levels uh, as well as help you to probably live longer because as things come up, you'll be more prepared for them. Uh, next slide, please. So an, another barrier uh, to uh, savings uh, that many people experience is the challenge of uh, taking that first step. And this is something that we have uh, with, with many things, right? Um, taking the first step is always the hardest thing to do. Um, you may ask yourself, um, hey, you know what? I'm living from paycheck to, to paycheck. Um, there's no way I can save, right? Uh, but the reality of it is that's not necessarily true. Um, after taking a, a long, uh, hard look at your, you know, like your spending and shifting your focus uh, to delay gratification, uh, you may be able to find some areas where you can reduce your expenses and free up some money to put towards savings. Because um, a lot of times we don't really think, uh, think about that portion. It's sort of like, oh, uh, I only have what I have. But a lot of times we also have a lot of extra things in which we uh, partake in that we could probably reduce. Um, and, and we're gonna get more into that later as we start talking about looking at uh, your spending habits and, and uh, the way that we sort of have, uh, uh, many of us uh, don't really think about uh, a budget. And so having a budget also helps with these things, which like I said, we'll, I'll get into a little bit later. Um, you may also feel that uh, any extra money that you have uh, should be going toward paying debts. However, it's important to build savings uh, while you're trying to pay off debts. Um, and this is a, a huge piece. Um, so I'm gonna say this again. Um, it is important to build your savings while you're trying to pay off debts. Uh, while increasing uh, payments uh, to pay off your balances, uh, like for instance, on like a credit card, uh, it's quicker uh, to save money and in interest. Uh, what happens if you experience, uh, and like if you do that, what, what happens if you experience an unexpected uh, expense? For instance, a car issue, uh, any kind of, of little issue that may come up, uh, you don't have money saved for it. And so then you end up utilizing your credit cards all over again. And the idea is to not use your credit cards uh, and, and put yourself in a, a bigger, uh, a larger amount of debt. Um, a better approach would, would be to, to save uh, while you're paying off things. We don't often talk about that, but I think that's a, a huge piece once again. 
Um, also, <clears throat> uh, if you find uh, yourself asking, if I can't save a lot per month, what is the point of saving a small amount? Um, even if you only spent, like were able to save, let's say five or $10 a month, uh, over time that adds up. And it's also good to create that habit. So when you do have more, you can actually save more. Those are, are, are really, it, it, it's really big uh, to try to do that and, and create that habit early on because that way that delayed gratification becomes more of a routine for you and, and not something that is so harsh you know, when, when you try to start saving. Uh, don't let the fact that you, know, you, don't, you don't have a lot of money uh, left over um, deter you from starting to save. Because uh, one thing that I can say for certain is if uh, you never start saving, uh, <laughs> you'll never save anything, right? It's just like the lottery. If you never, uh, if, if you never uh, play, you can never win. <laughs> it's, it's the same concept. Um, uh, yeah, please, next slide. Um, so when it comes to uh, uh, how saving helps, uh, it is uh, one of the most important ways that uh, saving can help you is by creating a shift in managing your finances. Um, uh, managing uh, our finances is normally something that we do oftentimes reactively. We do it because, oh my God, I got to pay for this right now. We don't necessarily do it proactively. And that's what I mean when I say reducing stress and, and, and making your life a little bit better. If you are proactive and you're already, always prepared, you don't have to get ready if you're, if you're already ready. So that's the idea. Um, in this particular uh, example, imagine that you're taking uh, your car in to an auto mechanic and you're hearing uh, 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 engine noises that are strange and you're like, you know what, I need to go and get my car fixed. Uh, the mechanic estimates uh, the, the, the cost to fix this to be $1,500. If you had not planned for that expense, uh, how would you pay for it? Um, many people would likely, you know, if I was to ask you guys one-on-one, -on -one, you would likely tell me, oh, you know what? I'd probably put it on my credit card. Right. But if you pay for it with your credit card, then now you're paying interest. Which means you're actually paying more than that fifteen hundred dollars. So the idea, this is why we, we, we talk about. Putting aside money, you know, uh, for savings and, and preparing for consequences that will inevitably happen. We will, there will always be things that will happen from day to day that we didn't necessarily prepare for. However, if you have savings and you create a, a, a savings and for these types of, of things to happen, you're a lot better prepared in life and, and it's just a bump in the road that you can kind of get by. Uh, and considering what we had happen last year uh, that many people didn't prepare for, uh, savings has probably become more at the front forefront for a lot of folks because even those that thought they had it together, if you lose your job and you have nothing saved up, it doesn't matter how much money you made the year before. What you what you have now is what matters. And uh, with delays and things like unemployment and other things, people were really scrambling and still are struggling right now due to these things. <clears throat> so. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it, it is very important to try to uh, 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 put aside uh, money for like things like vehicle maintenance uh, in advance. So you don't have to worry when that time comes because it's not a, a, a if, it's a matter of when those things happen. Um, it could be a tire, it could be all kinds of things like that. And maybe you don't have vehicles, or maybe you own a home, maybe you, you, you know, it could be appliances, it could be anything. So there will always be things. Um, so by managing your uh, finances proactively, uh, planning ahead for expenses, uh, you'll be better able to control your finances. And rather than uh, your finances, uh, you know, being in control of you, and that's the difference, you know, 
Um, uh, this control will not only uh, enable you to make uh, good financial choices to improve your financial situation, uh, but you know, to avoid paying, you know, like interest on the credit card, but it'll also uh, remove the emotional stress that arises when you have these unexpected uh, consequences or uh, expenses. So um, saving is a saving is a win-win for all of us. Um, Leah, next slide, please. One more time. Okay. So for, for this particular portion, I'm, I, I think you guys got maybe a handout uh, that, that came along with this. Uh, and on uh, uh, slide two, we'll, we'll, uh, it, there's some space for you to write down some information uh, here, because this question is something. Troy, we don't send out the handouts till after the program. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. good to know. So, so uh, this, this may be a portion where you could, uh, actually jot down because I'm going to, these three questions uh, are, are questions that I want you guys to ask yourselves. Um, and so uh, now that you understand the barriers uh, to saving um, and how savings helps us, let's review and determine how, uh, you know, how to determine your savings goals. Um, the first step in determining your savings goals is to visualize uh, where you want to be in the future. Uh, you can do this by asking yourself these three questions uh, that are um, that are here. Uh, what does your ideal financial situation look like? How does that differ from where you are today? And what purchases would you like to make that you can uh, cannot make today? So you know whether that mean purchasing a home, whether that mean, you know, school, whatever that is, the, these are the things that I want you to think about as we move forward in this. Um, so uh, Leah, if you will, um, uh, please uh, go to the next slide for me. As you start to uh, think about, um, you know, the, the answer to those questions we, we, we were just discussing, um, it's important to make sure that uh, all your goals, um, you know, for one, let me say, all your goals may be different. My goals in life are gonna be different than Howard's goals or any of your goals. All of our goals are probably gonna be slightly different. So it's important to know that it's okay for our, our, our goals to be different. Um, it's also okay to go about things uh, in different ways. Everyone has a different way of, you know, a, a comp accomplishing the same goals. So, um, but one of the things I want you to, 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 to do is like um, to, to think about uh, smart characteristics. These are very, very um, important things to know when you're looking to build. Um, you want to make sure that it's specific. You want to make sure that your goals are attainable, realistic, and time bound. Uh, so the first thing uh, I would say is you want to make sure that a goal should be, uh, uh, um, like I said, specific and answer the question, what exactly do you want to achieve? That's what you want to ask first. What is it that you want to achieve? Uh, a goal should also be something that is measurable, which is where the M from SMART comes from. You wanna make sure that it is measurable so that you'll know when you have achieved that goal. If you don't know when you achieve the goal, then it's, it's sort of pointless. So a, a, a whole reason that for having a goal is to also know like, hey, I, I achieved this, I won. I wanted to save $2,000, I got there, yay. So that's the whole idea. Um, also, when uh, the goal is attainable, uh, there are steps that can be determined to achieve it. Uh, a goal should be realistic and it should also be time bound and uh, or it there should be a time frame for completion. So whether this be something that is you know long term or short term, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, it should have a date of completion. Uh, I want you to uh, think for a second 
the back to when we were just talking about um, what does your ideal financial situation look like? What did you think about when, when that came up? How did you, uh, how does that differ from where you are today? And also what purchases would you like to make that you cannot? Um, I want you to think back to that because that, those are, are, are the things that I want you to look at being smart about. Were, the, were those uh, things that you came up with smart? Okay. Um, next, please. Next slide, please. Let's talk about short-term goals. Um, and, you know, early on, I, I used to think short-term goals as things that were like a couple of weeks and things like that. Um, I, I never really realized in, until I got into this that you know, short-term goal could be something, uh, uh, you know, anything less than 12 months, um, and which is you know a long time. 12 months seems like forever, doesn't it? Um, and so um, it's important to sort of separate your goals into you know short-term, mid, long-term, so you uh, uh, have a better idea as to how long it's going to take. So once again. You're looking at about 12 months for your average short-term uh, goal, well, less than 12 months for a short-term goal. Um, also, uh, when looking to achieve, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're likely, uh, how can I put this? Um, you're likely to be uh, like, like smaller amounts that you're, you're probably uh, likely to, to, to it's, it's common for short-term goals uh, to begin uh, when you want to save for emergency, like a emerg create emergency savings. It's nice to have like a short-term uh, a goal to begin this. Um, funds uh, set aside in case that you know you might need at some point over the next year. Uh, that is what you you want to try to create is a a short-term goal that you can have create some emergency savings just in case anything happens. Um, like we talked about the car repairs. Uh, um, in, in this case, you could also look at things like emergencies, vacations, and small purchases. Um, emergency savings uh, can carry you through like hard times, uh, times where you experience a reduction in income, which a lot of people experienced last year. Also, um, un uh, you know, unencountered uh, uh, unexpected expenses. Uh, once again, car repairs, house repairs, etc. cetera. Um, if you don't currently have an emergency savings plan, uh, this would be something I would consider a, a top priority. This is something that we, we should make a, a priority because it's something that at some point we will all use. And once again, like I said, Last year was a doozy for a lot of people. It was a, a real eye opener for a lot of people because they weren't necessarily prepared. And, and, and it, it, honestly, it would have been hard to prepare for, for such a crisis. So no, no one really would have known this was, was gonna happen. And so um, those that didn't have any kind of emergency savings, it's, it was a problem for, for them because, hey, you're living check to check and now you have nothing saved up in case of anything. Hey, I need milk, I need whatever. So it's important to do that. Um, like I said, the other things for short-term goals, these could be things, purchases like, you know, a new computer, uh, clothing. Uh, this could be things like uh, saving for holidays and vacations uh, that you would like to take each year. These are things that uh, having a, a, one of these savings accounts would be great for. Um, you should begin uh, uh, for a short term, uh, you, you should begin saving for a short term goal. Um, you will notice once you do this, uh, your mindset, you, you will have a shift in your mindset uh, where you recognize that your spending choices today are, are you know, directly impact your ability to do what you wanna do in the future. Next slide, please. We're gonna talk a bit about midterm goals here. And midterm goals are things that um, that take between one and five years to achieve. Uh, uh, these things uh, are determined, uh, you know, 
this requires a different mindset than a short-term goal, obviously, because a you know, short-term goal is a shorter time period. So uh, within a midterm goals, it, it can be easy to think of things, the, uh, the achievement date uh, by a midterm goal is also, uh, it, it's, it's so far away that sometimes it can be really difficult for us to, um, to achieve this one. This one is a harder one because you know, short term, hey, I get a, I can finish this off in less than 12 months. I might finish this off in a few weeks, might be a few months. But when it comes down to, you know, a midterm goal, it just takes so much longer. It makes it much more challenging for folks to stick to it. So um, uh, this is, uh, this sort of, uh, you know, sort of goal, uh, oftentimes it, it's tough. And so sometimes we'll get people who want to uh, skip uh, 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 you know, skip the, the savings. You know, it's important to have it have have savings every single month. And when you start doing it long term, they're like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna miss this month. I'm gonna use this savings to do something different. And so uh, it, it's important to to try to stick to that goal to achieve uh, uh, this at the end. You want to make sure that you 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 achieve your goal. Uh, also. Um, the, <clears throat> when looking at this, you want to uh, stick to your plan. You want to uh, do your best to, to, to stay on track with your savings. Uh, uh, you want to make sure that um, you, you, you know, like when you look at this, I think you'll think of think yourself later as, as you start to accumulate more money and you start to see how much you're saving and how that savings is going. Look at look at your uh, your statements. Uh, uh, reward yourself, you know. Uh, uh, paying down debts, these things uh, often take, take some time. It's not an overnight process. So if you have credit card debts and, and you want to pay them down, that's not something that you're going to be able to pay uh, overnight. Uh, same thing with a, a, a car payment. These are things that take a little longer to do. So it's important to understand that these things take a little longer uh, in, in, in your planning. Uh, also, when you start looking at um, uh, uh, paying, uh, like, like if you want to uh, take vacations and things of that nature, just understand that they, they are a, a, a longer, it takes a longer time period to be able to do so. Uh, Leah, I'm going to go to the next slide for long-term goals. So long-term goals are, are things that we look to achieve uh, that are more long term. They're more five five years or longer. Oftentimes, these are things like you know when we want to purchase a a, a home. These are things when we want to you know uh, set aside money for our children's tuition. These are things that we want to do as far as like 401k uh, and retirement accounts. Th this is uh, what long term goals are. So just to give you sort of an idea, um, it's uh, also important not to delay to start these goals. These are goals that you want to get started on as, as soon as possible because they take the longest to achieve. Uh, so uh, as the sooner the better um, and, and you know, that, that will help you in the end. Also, um, they require a lot of money, right? So uh, like if you're looking at college tuition or any of these things because it takes so long to accumulate the, the funding, uh, like once again, you, you have to start earlier. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Another thing that you have to think about when you're looking to, uh, uh, when you're looking at long-term savings is you also have to look at the rate of inflation. Um, it's important to take in that into consideration. Uh, inflation is uh, a general rise in, in, in price um, of the goods and services that causes a, a fall in the purchasing uh, power of the money. Um, and so with that, what this means is that uh, a, a dollar, you know, <laughs> what a dollar buys you today um, may not be as much in the future, which is sort of the whole cheeseburger idea. You see three patties on one side uh, and, and, and nowadays that's what you, what you used to get. Now, when you get a cheeseburger, you get one patty uh, and, and one slice of cheese. So the reality of it is, over time, that money uh, value uh, drops. You know, we talk to our grandparents, and they tell us, "Oh, you know, I used to buy 
all these different things from the grocery store for like five dollars whereas now we spend fifty dollars on, on some chips and 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 dip so uh it, it, it's you know times have changed with that next slide please <clears throat> So where to stash your savings? Uh, this is another a common thing that we get that comes up all the time. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, we, we don't know. So uh, now that you know uh, what you want to save for, the next step is decide where you want to save it. Um, for uh, short to midterm goals, you want to choose an account that provides uh, like easy access to those funds, uh, such as a traditional savings. So a tradi traditional savings account uh, will, will help you to save for emergency funds and things. So that's, that's sort of what you want to have for that. But when you start talking about more long-term uh, uh, goals, you want to go to something a little different. You want to have something um, that's completely separate from your you know, checking and, and, and savings account. Um, <clears throat> um, so a great way to, to you know, effortless, effortlessly uh, 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 save is to set up automatic uh, automatic deposits, um, I think that you know I've done this years and years ago. Uh, many of you may have also done the same. Uh, I automatically were, would have always put a, a, away a certain percentage of my income uh, to my savings just automatically. That way, I don't have to think about it. It's already there. There's not a whole lot of you know uh, of, of negotiating involved. I've, I know what I have coming in and I know exactly where my savings should be. And so that really makes it a lot easier of a process to be able to save. Um, so <clears throat> another account um, to consider when you, you know, you're holding funds for like short and midterm goals are uh, money market deposit accounts. Um, these are, are, are similar to our traditional savings accounts. The, the real difference there would be uh, with these particular types of accounts, uh, they differ in the sense that they have more variable uh, interest rates. Uh, and, and oftentimes you, you, you get a higher yield uh, than you would on a traditional savings account. So that's why we want to use those. Um, and you can get those through your financial institution. So if you you know, uh, bank with Chase or Bank of America, some credit unions, um, you, you should be able to uh, open those there. <clears throat> um, it's important to also know that uh, there will likely be a minimum balance requirement if you decide to open up one of those accounts, but pretty much you have one with a, a, a traditional savings as well. Next slide, please. I'm going to uh, go over uh, briefly um, like long-term retirement accounts. Um, so for long-term retirement accounts, uh, there are specific savings vehicles that are used to hold uh, your retirement savings. Uh, this could be your 401k, uh, 403b. Uh, these types of accounts uh, uh, are, are offered from employers. Um, to their employees, uh, oftentimes, like so for a 401k, these are for for-profit companies. Uh, the 403b is for nonprofit companies, um, and and these types of uh, accounts, uh, you decide what present it, what percentage you want of income you want to contribute uh, to, uh, to to your retirement. And many times, the employer they they may match that um, or a portion of that contribution. Um, that money is deducted from your uh, paycheck uh, pre-tax, so uh, beforehand, meaning that uh, you don't have to pay uh, federal or state income taxes on it. Um, you really only uh, pay if you decide to pull that money out. Um, so, you know, it's important to understand how that works. Um, so, um, the other, you know, major. Uh, a way to save for retirement is a lot of people use um, the traditional individual, uh, I'm sorry, the traditional individual retirement account, um, better known as uh, IRA. Uh, and IRA is a, a, a type of retirement account that is similar, very similar to a, a 401k or a 403b, 
Uh, but the difference is uh, uh, they're not uh, tied to the employer. So you can have these even if your employer doesn't have a retirement savings account. You can start this on your own or you can have both. Um, <clears throat> um, when you open these types of accounts, uh, you know, you could also open these at, at the same at, at many financial institutions, um, such as, you know, credit unions, banks, uh, mutual fund companies also. Um, a uh, Roth, uh, a Roth IRA uh, is different from a traditional IRA um, in regards to the tax implications. Uh, I won't get into too much, you know, detail about that, but there are some, some differences there. Um, contributions uh, to the Roth IRA are, um, or the Roth IRA <laughs> uh, are not uh, pre-tax deductions, uh, meaning that uh, you can you can pay off federal and state income taxes uh, on those contributions. You, you already pay those, the, the federal and the state in advance. So um, as you earn, you know, as you earn, your earnings grow, uh, there, it's, it's tax free in the account. And since you've already paid the, the, the taxes um, to the federal and the state, when you decide you want to use that money, uh, you can withdraw those funds, um, you know, with, with no, no questions asked, with no, no issues with, uh, with your taxes. Um, which type of IRA is, is going to be most beneficial for you? It really is all dependent upon uh, your tax bracket, and, um, and and you know now, like your tax bracket right now versus uh, in retirement. Uh, so uh, you'll want to consult a financial advisor, as, as I spoke about earlier, uh, to help you determine which type is better for you. Next slide, please, Leah. So this is one of uh, uh, my you know, one of the things that at Balance we we use more than anything, I'd say. This is like one of the things that we do as you come through the door. Um, and I sort of spoke about this a little bit er earlier. Um, uh, you have to take inventory of what you spend. Uh, and in order to, to be able to uh, in, invest, to in order to be able to save, you need to find, uh, know exactly what you have coming in and what you have going out. And so knowing your finances um, will help you to identify, you know, your starting point. Uh, the best way to, to handle, um, to get a handle on, on your finances is to create a monthly budget. And, you know, a lot of us haven't really uh, uh, used a budget. Maybe we've never had one before. We think we have and maybe not really, really stuck to it. Um, it's important to look at your day-to-day -day spending and I mean everything and when I say that here here's an, an, an example that I run into a lot right now um, because everyone's at home uh, people still have to eat and a lot of times you get tired of eating in the home so people will do things like for instance they will order uber eats or uh, or, or doordash or something like that and oftentimes they don't realize what those expenses are and, and, and the reason I say that is because when I have people and we and, and interview people, and we're, we're talking about, you know, hey, I don't know where my money is going, et cetera. And I say, hey, well, how much did you spend this week on, uh, on eating out or, or Uber Eats? Or, and then it becomes, oh, well, I, I spent, you know, $20 three days this week. That's $60 a week, you know? And, and, and then you're looking at, you know, basically $240 a, a, a month, you know, in, in, in a month. And, and, and you think about as that adds up, you probably didn't, didn't really even think about it. Oftentimes people don't even really think about things like that, or they don't think about the six pack of beer that they buy per week or the whatever that those other things are. You know, And so as we look into those things, you get a better idea as to where you can cut some costs. Uh, and, and oftentimes we do have things that we can cut. So um, <clears throat> your um, the, the golden rule of budgeting is that your expenses should not exceed your income. You should not be spending more than you are making. Bottom line, if you're spending more than you're making, then you're in trouble. So um, <clears throat> if you crunch the numbers, 
as you know in a budget and you and you have like i said more going out than coming in each month um it's imperative that you change some habits um if you are in a position where your expenses um are, are you know exceeding your income uh, you won't be able to commit you know very much to, to your savings goals so you'll end up having to, to dip into those funds as you start trying to save, you'll also be going back and dipping in and taking some back out. And so the idea is that we don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure that you budget and account for it. And more than anything, stay disciplined. You have to stay disciplined. It's not fun. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, but what is fun is when I take my vacations that I've saved for. So um, <laughs> Uh, I, I think that is a, a, a huge thing. Saving, like I said, is not fun, but that reward in the end is beautiful. Uh, and, and so those are things to think about. Um, <clears throat> so the first step you know, to, to saving is freeing up some funds. If you can free up some funds, you can definitely uh, you know, put toward, I don't like, once again, it doesn't matter whether it's five or $10, or whether it's hundreds of dollars, but the more you make, the, the more you should be able to put aside, and hopefully, you know, over time that accumulates. Um, when uh, uh, evaluating which spending habits to adjust, keep in mind that you know the sacrifices that you make today will help you to uh, a secure success tomorrow. Next slide, please, Leah. So this next portion is, is more interactive and you guys can uh, uh, actually use your uh, reactions uh, at the bottom. I think that they work for you guys. Um, so as I ask these questions, you, you could, you know, you know, actually, you know what? I don't know if you can actually write, uh, uh, raise your hand for each of them, but I, I'll, so I'll just have you guys think about them. Um, which would you rather do? Buy coffee and a pastry every day or like I love, take a vacation. Um, it's important to know that there is no right or wrong answer to this uh, uh, you know, during this exercise because the reality of it is everyone's spending priorities, once again, are different. Mine are different than yours. Yours are gonna be different than mine's. Mine are different than Howard. So uh, it, it, it really is, <laughs> I see somebody said coffee. <laughs> um, so um, it depends on you know, what, what your, your preferences are. So. Uh, for me, mine, like I said, is vacation, but I see some people are like, you know, hey, coffee, vacation. Hey, listen, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> um, next slide, please, Leah. <laughs> so would you prefer going to um, a, a movie and, you know, and getting popcorn and soda once a month or purchasing a new upgraded cell phone? <laughs> that's another one like you know like you're going to have people that would go for either just because it, it's all about preference cell phone i see cell phone <laughs> um yeah I, I i'm probably more of a cell phone guy i can watch uh you know netflix at home uh <laughs> movies and popcorn definitely i like that <laughs> so all of these things there, like, once again, there's no right or wrong. These are just preferences and things that people like. Um, uh, the next slide for me, Leah. <laughs> um, this slide, uh, 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 this one, would you rather have cable TV or pay off your credit card balance? Ugh. You know, which one would I enjoy today? <laughs> I'd say uh, probably, uh, I don't know, either one of those could be great for me. I mean, like, I don't really, I could do without the cable TV if I could get rid of the, you know, ha not having any debt. debt. Not having debt is a raise. So <laughs> um, paying off debts is definitely my, my, would be my choice. But I know for some folks, you know, once again, to, to each his own. Um, but these are the types of questions in which we at Balance work with people to, uh, you know, things to identify. We try to get people to start thinking about uh, these types of choices and, uh, and, and what it is that they want to achieve 
Um, everybody has different goals. So to sit down with people and talk about like where your uh, preferences are to look at, at a budget, because oftentimes people have really grandiose ideas. Uh, for instance, you know, I get a lot of people to come in and they say, hey, I want to purchase a home. And they don't think about how many things, how many steps there are in order to purchase that home. There are, you know, the, the whole idea of obviously you, you're going to have to probably put down a, a chunk of money for, for that. So maybe you've saved, but maybe your credit isn't good. So you, you maybe not get the, the highest interest rate you want or, or, the, or the best, I mean, the, the lowest interest rate you want, the best interest rate you want. And so that you, you have to think about those things. You have to consider that. You have to consider if you decide to get a condo, uh, will this, uh, the, the HOA fees eat me alive? Uh, because those can be expensive. Uh, there's the insurance piece that you also have to look at. Um, and so a lot of times people just aren't quite prepared for all of these different things. And so as um, we start to sit down, we look at budgets, you know, we have to you know, look at some of the expenses that we have from day to day that we, we never think about. Like once again, when, when before the pandemic, uh, a lot of times, especially like working downtown, it's like, hey, you know what? We're gonna stop and have maybe a brew after work or something. And you don't think about how much that actually costs and how much that takes out of your budget. Some people probably made, save themselves a lot of money right now uh, during this pandemic because they, they're not able to socialize in the ways that they were before and spend the same amount of money that they were before. So. Um, all of these things are things to consider, and these are just the basics of, uh, of, of sort of saving and, and, and getting started and things to think about as you get started. Um, uh, the next slide, Leah. Um, so here at Balance, we want to uh, thank you all for participating in this. Uh, I have, uh, you know, I have Howard here who uh, I know some people have some questions. Uh, I know I kind of ran through this thing, and so we're going to try to answer some of the questions in which people have. Once again, we, we don't help with investments. That's not what we do, but I can help with uh, some, some of the basics and running through some of the things that we do because uh, we don't just help with just savings. We help people with uh, credit cards. We help people with credit debt. We help people with student loan debt. We help people with all kinds of uh, other issues, getting banked uh, and, and choosing uh, good banking institutions, those types of things. So uh, uh, Howard, if you uh, will take it off, if we have any questions. So I've been watching the chat box and I'm not seeing any questions. Okay. I, I mean, th this is a fairly straightforward presentation. It is the basics uh, of, of saving and, uh, and how to be, you know, to get started. Um, so, um, but if anyone does have questions, please feel free to uh, enter those in the chat box now. You can also unmute yourself and ask your question out loud. Oh yeah, that, that works too. Questions, questions. Let's let's get some questions. <laughs> Hi. Yes, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Hello. Go yeah, ahead. I keep I keep getting these phone calls from various uh, companies about my student loans. And they're from different companies. And I'm certain that, um, and I've been moving around a lot lately, so it's hard for me to uh, keep track of who's calling me because I'm so busy with this chaotic life that I'm living right now, quite frankly. Um, but I keep getting these calls from various companies saying that uh, they're going to help me with my, my student loan debt, which I do have. How do I know which one is legit? Um, and because I'll, I'll start talking to them thinking that they're legit, but then they're like, they start to sound shady after a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Howard, do you have a, 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 a very easy way to, to, to do that? Because I, I've, I've had the same issues and I, I can tell you what I've done, but um, Howard may have a better idea. Um, um, Howard, you're on mute. So I know one of the ways that you can actually check, because I know a lot of people have issues about where are my student loans, who might be handling them. Um, what I would recommend to clients is there is a good website and it's um, the Federal Student Loan um, website. And you can go to NSLDS 
www.ed.gov. So again, that website's N as in November, S as in Sam, L as in Lima, D David, S as in Sam, .ed.gov. And this is a really good um, website to try to track where your federal student loans are. And I found this to be you know, really helpful for a lot of clients, especially if um, this participant asks, they're getting a whole bunch of phone calls from different places. So you do have to register, you know, for this online and, you know, enter your information or username and password. And I think that that would be a, a good first step to try to locate, you know, where your um, federal student loans are. Thank you very much. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, and um, Rosie, I would just be really careful with those calls because there are a lot of scammers right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And our training here at the library is to be extra cautious. You never want to give anybody your personal information over the phone. Uh, most of those organizations would not be pursuing you that way. So um, I would just not respond. If it were me, I wouldn't respond. And I would do my research to find out who legitimately helps you reduce your student loan, but I would not respond to those phone calls. Yeah, I, I think that is absolutely uh, correct because one of the things that I definitely know is that they, they definitely normally don't call you un unless you know some, something's wrong. Um, and, and so typically you don't have um, you know, your, your student loan companies calling you like that. So um, <laughs> not for even refinancing or any of that stuff, you'd have to ask for it. So. Ah. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I have a quick question, it's two of them. Uh, can you provide a uh, free online um, budget, uh, some kind of, I guess, Excel sheet where it can um, go ahead and do calculations for you um, and, mm. and perhaps uh, see monthly, uh, whatever, uh, progression of saving, uh, but first, first, I do want, um, and I think other participants would want this too, is, is some kind of sheet uh, that you can input data and mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, see what results uh, that all of you are talking about. And then the second question um, is around uh, credit reports. Uh, I put in a request for all three of the, the major I guess, companies or institutions. Mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, the automation on the phone uh, assumed that I wanted it mailed instead of like electronic copies. So I've waited. And of course, something as important as this was lost in the mail. I still haven't received it. I'm concerned about it because it has my credit information. So what can I do uh, about that? Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Howard, do you know the? Uh, do you remember the? Because most of the 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 apps that I've seen that have budgeting, which we don't, you know, I typically don't use, just because we have, uh, you know, we we have a system here uh, that so we normally don't use those, utilize those uh, uh, apps, etc. Uh, here, uh, we did have a recent conversation about some of those, and I know Howard's been here a lot longer, so he may have used some more of them than I have. Uh, uh, but I know that there are some paid uh, services, you know, the, the, the key point was free. Uh, mm -hmm. I, there, there, I don't know if, how many good free uh, uh, things there are out there, where, where, you know, to help you with tracking your budgeting other than coming to some place like, I mean, which is why we provide the services because we do it for free. Um, but as far as like, you know, actually having something that you could easily get on your phone. I do think that there were two of them, if I remember correctly, Howard, you may know uh, uh, better than I do, but I think that there were, uh, were two uh, uh, apps, if I remember correctly, that, that may be somewhat helpful. The thing with balance is though, everything that we normally recommend are things that we've tested, that we know are, are, are legitimate that work. And so therefore we typically don't, don't like, you know, I can't, approve someone else's uh, uh, app because uh, I don't I don't quite you know like I can't give you I don't want you to want to tell you some misinformation so uh, that's part of the issue that we run into here but how it may be able to answer that portion a little better yeah I know a couple apps that a lot of my clients use is mint 
So if you went to, I believe, mint.com, that's one um, resource. We also do refer clients to nerdwallet.com. And NerdWallet actually puts out, um, they have, they list the seven best budget apps for 2021. So I think that that would be a good starting point to kind of look at the Nerd Wallet so we can give you examples of different budget apps. Um, also, what I recommend to my clients is a lot of banks where you currently have your, you know, banking accounts with, they do also offer a lot of, they offer like their own app where um, if you're using, let's say like your debit card with that bank, it will actually track your purchases for you and categorize it in different categories. Um, you know, so that's another way that, you know, I've found that, you know, clients um, may want to look into. So I would say mint.com would be a good one nerdwallet.com it gives a whole listing of different you know the best budget apps and then i would also you know recommend that you look at your own bank where you have your accounts with um to try to see like, what they might have for you know programs thank you howard um i think you said mint as in i am i sorry m i n t dot org uh, dot com correct that is correct. Okay, thank you. Um, and if you have a co-facilitator, if they could type uh, those suggestions that um, Howard just gave onto the, the chat area so that everybody can get the correct um, spilling and option. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, facilitators. I have two questions. Um, one is I get mail from Capital One and other credit companies. To, and I want to cancel getting the letters. And when I called, they said that I have to give them my, my social security number. No, don't do it. No. Okay. And then the other question is, I did I missed the first part of your your program. Um, so the balance service is for free. Yes. And yes. how do I qualify? So, so balance is a, a, a free program for those that live or work in uh, San Francisco. Um, and so as long as you live, work, have an address there, you, you can receive these services uh, uh, free of charge. Um, and, and, you know, uh, you can see, you can speak with uh, uh, all, any, any coach, uh, you know, free of charge as many times as you'd like. Uh, we, uh, you know, I have people that I talk to weekly. I have people that I talk to uh, monthly, depending upon what their needs are. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes people need, a, 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 you know, help into figuring out uh, their budgets. And, and let's be honest, most of us have never really sat down with someone and felt confident and free to just dis disclose our, our financial information. Uh, this is a, a, a good tool because not only do we look in to people's credit, we look at um, any kind of uh, issues that they may have had in banking, uh, and and this can be very helpful with getting people um, uh, started uh, and, and into trying to save and those types of things and and figuring out where your money uh, is because oftentimes you know we like I said we don't know um, we don't look at the little expenses that we make from day to day the little purchases like coffee. Uh, I know a lot of people love coffee, but coffee can be expensive uh, if, if you go to Blue Bottle every morning. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's, those are things that we help people to look into and figure out. Figure out. Thank you. Do you have yes. uh, meetings in person or Zoom or telephone? How do I, how, what do we do? So currently we're, we're doing most of our meetings uh, uh, via phone. And honestly, this has probably been the most helpful thing that, you know, that the pandemic could have given us. Uh, in the sense that a lot of folks don't feel like coming out and going into a building to receive a service. And so now you can do it from the luxury of your own home. And I think this is, uh, uh, has been very effective for some folks because, you know, once again, all you have to do is pick up the phone and, and we can talk via phone. Um, uh, we uh, do have the capability to do uh, more like a Zoom meeting, but in, in general, we, we typically do uh, currently everything over the phone um, for now. What's the phone number, please? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last question. What is the phone number? Oh, so uh, the, the phone number, 
that I, I'll give you is the uh, it's a one eight hundred number. Um, they have a, a a few different ones, so it's one eight 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 four five six twenty two twenty seven. Eight 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 four five six two 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 seven. Correct. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. I'm going to actually provide another number that will get right to our smart money coaching department. Um, not to confuse everybody, but um, the number is 877 256 0073. So again, that number is 877-256-0073. And that way you'd be actually able to reach a coach pretty quickly. And just to kind of chime in, the first appointment that you do schedule with us is going to be scheduled for an hour. So you will wanna make sure you have about an hour of time set aside to meet with your coach. And then we do schedule subsequent appointments, typically at a month out intervals that are about 30 minutes. So this is not like a program where it's one and done, where we just see you once, but it's definitely something that we, you know, form a relationship with our clients to continue the coaching, um, you know, moving through and, and working on your financial goals. What is your name? Your company again, please, Howard? Um, it's Balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E. And you can find us on the website at www dot balancepro.org and I'll and I'll put that down here for you and Thank you. Uh, yeah and we are going to be having another presentation because I know I thought I saw a couple questions about credit but I know our time is like really limited so I'm going to be giving a presentation on the 27th um, related to understanding credit so I would highly recommend that you attend that um that webinar, not only because I'm going to be giving it, but I know that there's a lot of questions usually related ar around credit. So um, just to kind of put my, you know, toot my horn that I'm going to be giving that um, webinar on the 27th. And that's going to be at two o'clock in the afternoon. Through the library? Yeah, it's yes. here at the library. I put the link in the chat. And I'll send it to you after the program. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, excuse me. What what date is the uh, um, is that April twenty seventh that that um, seminar is yeah. going to be held? Yes, that's right. And that's what's the topic? I'm sorry, somebody came in and started to talk to me. Understanding credit. Understanding credit. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I think I got lost in the chat. Um, do you suggest keeping several separate savings accounts for the the various things that you're saving for? One for you know the the um, you know, sudden loss of income bucket and then the eventual expenses such as auto repair bucket and then yet another savings account for, you know, the vacation or special purchases? I, I think it really all depends on the person, right? Um, I, I personally think that it can, it can be a bit, you know, much sometimes to, to, to have all of those buckets. Uh, but the good thing about having separate buckets is you don't end up tapping into you know, uh, like like your your major things that you want to do uh, long term or mid range, uh, you continue to have those because like your your day to day uh, uh, things like for instance, like I have like a vacation savings, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have that plus a regular savings that I use, uh, and and you know so that way if I have any kind of emergencies, there's a, this you know emergency fund over here. But then I have a totally different fund, you know, just for when I go on vacation. So when I go on vacations. I don't have to think about what money I'm going to spend because the money's already there. I use that account only for that. And so uh, I, I don't think it's a horrible idea to have multiple uh, uh, savings uh, as, as long as, as you can manage multiple savings, because sometimes that can be a lot. The more you have, more accounts you have, the harder it is to sort of keep up with them. But it, as long as you're 
uh, automatically, you know, uh, drafting it over, it's probably easier to keep up with, but you know, that, that depends on the person. Uh, uh, Howard has been doing it longer, so he, he may have some different uh, advice over his you know, years of, of knowledge. But uh, for, for me and my experience has been, it, it really depends on the person and what they think they can manage. Uh, and and if, that, if that makes it easier to, to not dip into it and, 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 and to stay disciplined, then I'd say have them. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Howard, did you have any? Yeah, I mean, I would just kind of jump in. I mean, you're right about, you know, you want to really, you know, keep it to something that you're going to be able to manage. Um, you know, typically, personally, I look at maybe two types of savings accounts that I may carry, more looking at larger maybe purchases. One, we should always be having for like emergency savings. And keep in mind, when we talk about emergency savings, like we talked about during the, the presentation, the goal really is to have about three to six months of your essential living expenses saved for emergencies. So what I mean by that is if you took, let's say your housing expenses, your grocery expenses, your transportation expenses, expenses that you have to pay on a monthly basis, you really wanna set a goal for yourself if you don't currently have three to six months of those expenses saved for emergencies you know, in case something happens, like you lose your job or, you know, you're not able to work or whatever it might be. And for me, maybe a secondary savings account might be if you're maybe saving for a vehicle or I see a lot of people, you know, for a down payment on a home. So I would probably look at, you know, having multiple maybe savings accounts for maybe larger things. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I, once again, I, I'll reiterate one more time. Last year was a, a hard time for a lot of folks and it's still carrying over this year. And so for a lot of folks that didn't prepare, they didn't have anything. And, and like right now you think about the, the issues with like unemployment and how long it's taking for, for folks to receive services or receive you know, that their, their unemployment. Um, it, it's, it's very vital to have your own you know, set of resources in case these things happen because it may take months before you can actually get it, get through to someone. And, and, and I've had so many of my clients who've, who've contacted me uh, and, and, and they've been months and months without hearing back. And so, you know, they only have what they have, you know, they only have what they have on, on, on hand, uh, liquid cash. And so if you don't have that saved, then, you know, you can be in a situation in which you're struggling and you don't you, you don't want to i mean have nothing set aside and and I, I think that's the difference between some folks who sort of were able to make it so far and other folks that are really really uh suffering right now i have i have a question sure now everything being on uh, uh, like automatic on uh, uh computers and stuff okay my worry is that um earthquake San Francisco and I can't the machines don't work my phone you know I, I can't charge it anymore and then I can't get what do you call it um I can't get service mm -hmm. should I have hard cash saved uh, so I, I I always believe you know when I moved out here disaster relief was one of the first things I had to think think about. I came here from North Carolina, we didn't have the same types of disasters, but there's also there are disasters and the, the the thing about here is you know we all know that it's a matter of time before we probably have one, right? So with that being said, I I'd, I'd always say keep that in mind of where you are and 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 where you are like no matter where you are you should always have some sort of emergency uh, uh, bag set aside an emergency fund, uh, you know, with, with a little bit of cash in it in case you need it. Uh, and I, I have, a, for instance, an, an emergency, uh, what I call a, a, a power brick that I keep in a bag that I'm ready. So if anything happens, I have my emergency equipment ready to go. So I don't have to worry about if my phone goes dead, I can just run out with that bag and I'm ready to go. So I, I think it's always important to have 
to prepare. Once again, this is about preparation. So prepare as if there were going to be a, a, as if you know there's going to be a disaster. And that's what I'd say. Make sure you have some some emergency cash. I'm not saying you need to have 10 grand set in that bag. That's not <laughs> that's not necessary. But you know, to to have some cash in case anything happened is always a good good idea to have a little bit on there. Thank you. Yep. I saw someone had their hand raised. I know we're getting close to the, you know, the the end time, but I want to make sure that I answer that question. Um, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do we know what to strive for uh, for retirement? I have no idea what. I mean, of course, uh, as much as possible, but you know, in order to try to have a set endpoint in mind, mm -hmm. uh, how, what amount with inflation and everything, you know? I, I think that this is where I, I think the, the you know, we, we want to make sure that we have a financial advisor for those things, because it, it's very important to make sure that you, you, you set aside those things in a very, uh, um, um, a very strategic way, because there, you do have to account for all of those things. And those aren't things that we actually handle here at Balance. Uh, we can definitely refer you to places to do those things, but we, you know, we, we basically get you prepared to do that. And so uh, I, we're sort of the step before you do that, or you can do that in, concurrently. I mean, you can do both at the same time. However, uh, that's not something that we specialize in here. Uh, so I don't want to uh, give that impression that we, you know, I, I couldn't tell you exactly how much you should put in, but I, I would advise you to definitely uh, seek some, you know, get that help from a financial advisor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to need to wrap up. Okay. Um, there, like I said, there was a question about opening up credit cards and things like that. I really would like to save that until we have my presentation, if that's okay, because we'll definitely be covering a lot about credit during that conversation. All right. Well, um, I, I want to tell you all, thank you so much for uh, this time and, and taking your time out to, to listen in on uh, what we uh, uh, bring. And I hope that, you know, for some of you folks, if you have any questions, if you have any needs, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we, we love to have your business. And in, in, in addition to that, just being able to help people to get by and understanding uh, how to, you know, how to manage, uh, because that's the one thing that, you know, I, I feel like you know, a lot of times we're not educated on. If you didn't go to school for it, you won't know. So uh, please feel free to uh, uh, utilize these services because every place does not offer these free services. So please take advantage of it. All thank right, you, thank, you, thank you so much, Troy. Um, so all the recording for this uh, presentation and the slides will be emailed out after the, the program ends. Thank you everyone for attending the San Francisco Library program. Thank you and all. Thank you, Troy and Howard thank for you presenting. All. Thank you. Thank you.